Hey there, welcome to another episode of Galaxy Gardens. My name is Chrissy and today it is super hot out. It's, I think we're gonna get a high of 93 today. So I'm way too hot. This is, this is my outfit, this is what we're doing. <laughs> we're gonna go harvest some coal rally today and try it out. So let's go check it out. <laughs> I don't have my kitchen lights on because it's like 90 degrees out, but I wanted to show you what I'm making back here. I'm making a loaf of bread. I don't know if you can see too closely, but I put a bunch of dried marigold petals in it. We grew giant marigolds last year, so I'm really excited to use them for something other than tea. They do have some good vitamins in it, but they just had like a good splashy color. And that's all I want. I don't know where the tripod is, but I'm gonna get some shishito peppers and we're gonna make some eggs because this is the first morning I've been home, like actually at my house in a while. <laughs> on a weekend, I'm, I'm there during the week, but on a weekend. Um, if you watch all our videos, most of the stuff we do is during weekdays. And we tend to spend time out of the house on weekends. So this is a treat for me and we have peppers coming in, so we're gonna eat them. The garden is a bit mad and does need some water. I didn't get a chance to water because we went out Friday and Saturday. And my freaking Greek basil is flowering. Because the one thing I don't like about growing basils is they tend to flower a lot. I love Thai basil. I think it's one of my favorite basils to consume, but I hate growing it because it flowers every other freaking day. But that's not why we're here. We're here for some shoshitos and we're gonna go make some eggs. Those are some beautiful shoshitos. So I'm gonna go add it to some eggs and it's gonna be really good. Okay, I have my shoshitos here, but I need to put that into this touch oven real quick. All right, let's see if I can do this really quick. This is just a small loaf of bread. There's only like three cups of flour in it. Um, I got it started last night. And um, I have the recipe on Instagram, but I'll put it in the description also. And I'm just gonna switch this around so you can see what I'm doing. All right, look at this beauty. So I'm just gonna do a little slit here. So we've been finding that our house is a bit too dry in the winter to keep a sourdough starter going and obviously too warm in the summer. So this is my backup is the recipe I used for this because it kind of tastes like sourdough but it's very soft um, and I like it. So it's not going to get huge, it's just a small loaf of bread but I'll definitely show you it when it comes out. So I'm going to put it in the oven for like 30 minutes with a lid and then like, I don't know, up to 15 minutes without it and it's going to look gorgeous. I've been trying so hard to use up our eggs. I just used, oh God, what was it? It was like six egg yolks and made like a bulk batch of mayo yesterday, which should be set right now. So I'm actually going to check it. But uh, I'm just trying to eat eggs every day. So we're going to boil some and I'll make some for breakfast. Here's some lettuce I picked two weeks ago. It's actually still good. Um, I'll rinse it, cut it up, and put it upside down with a paper towel, and that keeps pretty good. Here's the mayo. Oh yeah, that definitely set up. I kind of gave up on mixing it. I made it a little bit too firm last time, so I wanted it not quite so firm. Um, and it's a really nice yellow because of the mustard I put in there in addition to just using egg yolks and uh, separating it from the egg whites. So, really excited to have that, it's very sweet. So we're gonna just chop up some radishes and shoshitos. And our radishes have been keeping in water and it's funny because the coloring from the red ones leached out and made the water pink, but the radishes themselves still smell good, are still fresh, which is really weird, but we're gonna use it. 
I almost forgot to grab one thing. We're gonna go outside and then I'll show you what it is. Oh, it's so hot. I'm not doing any work out here today. So we have our black Spanish radish, which has this beautiful purple flowers. You can see that. Oh, it's not gonna cooperate, huh? There we go. See that? Anyway, so we have the pleasure of getting some radish pods, as you can see here, and I'm just gonna eat them. I've tried them, and they're quite good. Um, I'm gonna grow these in the fall and seed save at that time, so I'm just gonna eat these. They're, they're really good. Here's a better view. They're very sweet and not um, as peppery as when you take radishes out of the ground. And this is the first year we've been able to try this, so I'm definitely put the, putting this uh, with my eggs. I cut one open here for, so you can see the inside. Um, so you can see I actually cut through some of the seeds that were forming. Um, so if I was going to do this for seed saving, I would just leave it on the plant till the pod actually dried up. And then it has some radish seeds in there. So for now, I'm going to eat them. And then um, definitely going to do some seed saving in the fall. Um, from what I understand, all radish pods are edible, and some radishes are grown just for their seed pods. Uh, that's not what my goal is with these black Spanish radishes, but hey, I'm not going to complain. Still get some food. I got everything chopped, and we're going to start by cooking the radishes before we add it in. I'll show you what it looks like at the end. This is, this is totally ready for a couple eggs. I'm pretty lazy with the way I make my eggs. I'll just put the veggies down and then crack them on top, and we're good to go. I added the eggs in, we put a little lemon pepper and dill on top. And I don't know why, but ever since last year, I've just been really into the dill flavor. I don't know if my taste buds change. But I really like it on eggs. And I'll probably put some hot sauce on it after. So, that makes some eggs. I'm gonna go eat my pseudo omelet, and then we're gonna figure out what we're doing today, because it's way too hot to do any real work, but we do have some stuff we can harvest, so I think we're gonna do that. We'll get there. All right, our bread is done. I don't think I made it right. I'm not a very good baker. I think I put in the wrong amount of yeast. But it smells really good because of the marigold petals. Let's go ahead and spin this around so you can see it. I will be taking this out and putting it on a rack in a moment, but very nice color to it. it smells amazing from those marigolds. You can see it didn't rise that much. I don't think it put enough yeast in. I was kind of tired when I was making this last night, which you'll see in the, if you look at the recipe, um, you kind of start it the night before and then you can make it the next day, but it's like really easy to put together. So I'm gonna take this out. Here's a reason why I like to use parchment paper with the Dutch oven. I can just kind of raise it in and pull it out. Get your bread. I definitely could have let this rise longer before I put it in here. I could also put um, some water, spray some water on it. But I think it's still going to taste pretty good, even though it didn't rise that much. I never said I was a good baker. But we do have bread, so I'm going to eat it. Let's see, it's just a, a little one. But it smells amazing. I always forget how sweet the marigold petals smell when you heat them up, like um, when I put them in tea. So I'm excited for that. I broke another baking roll and I cut off a slice while it was still hot. But I just wanted to show you the inside of this. Also, I just wanted to eat a piece of bread because I want a piece of bread. But look at that. Look at those beautiful petals in there. It's still steamy. Um, I guess it's what you call a crumb. There you go. Uh, it didn't rise too much. So that's whatever. Just wanted some slicing bread to eat. So I'm going to put some butter on this and I'm going to try it. Now I'm outside. I'm going to find our tripod while we go harvest things. But meanwhile, I just wanted to show you this with some better lighting. I already took a bite out of it. It's a slightly crunchy crust. Not as much as you would get with a sourdough bread, but it's, it's very pleasant and the inside is light and fluffy. Even though we didn't get the rise that we wanted, um, usually when I make this recipe, it rises about twice as much as this did. 
but it's still good. And the marigold petals in there, like they taste really good. And they like smell really good. I'm definitely gonna make this again and let it um, probably rise longer before we make it. But if you ever wanna get like that sour flavor in your bread, but you don't have a sourdough starter, throw a splash of apple cider vinegar in there. Um, I don't know why, it just it ends up having like a pretty similar sour flavor once you cook it. So I'm really happy with this. I'm just gonna eat it through the week and we're gonna harvest some kohlrabi today. So let's go do that. Now that I've had some more of this, I think this would be really good with some mascarpone and honey and a little bit of flake salt on top. If I cut like a thin slice, I think that'd be a really tasty breakfast with this. It's very floral, which you get um, as you eat it. I suspect a reason why this didn't rise so much is because I didn't prehydrate the petals. I think I might have sucked some of the water up as they were in the dough. So I'll do that next time. They're really good, like very, very sweet. So definitely make this, uh, make it better than I did. And if you do, please uh, send us some pictures on Instagram. I'd love to see it. Hey there. So we are outside uh, Rasca Lane and it's in the 90s. I think we're supposed to have a high of like 92 or 93 today. But in the shade here is easily 10 to 15 degrees cooler. Like I'm very comfortable here. And the second I go out into the sunlight, my skin hurts. So we're gonna be collecting some kohlrabi today. I'll give you some close up shots and we're gonna be making kohlrabi fritters because it's super hot out and I'm not working in the yard. So what I am gonna do after we harvest this is put the leaves in the fridge in like 20, 30 minutes and we're gonna give it to the chickens so they have a cool snack on this hot day. All right, so we did water this a couple days ago. So it's doing very, very happy. If it was going under any heat stress, it would be drooping right now. But you can see our kohlrabi. Some of them are still on the smaller side. This is about as big as I expected the purple hyannis to get. Those are definitely ready. Um, one thing that surprised me about growing, excuse me, kohlrabi, is that the size at maturity is always smaller than I expect it to be. Even from the Cossack kohlrabi, which I've seen online can get to about as large as like a pound. And this one here is our biggest one. Absolutely beautiful. So I was looking online because we're definitely past like the days to maturity that they need to be at. And this is our first time like successfully growing it. So I don't want it to bolt. So on the conservative side, so we can actually like harvest something. We'll just harvest it on this smaller end. So apparently the purple and white Viennas, you wanna harvest them around like two to three inches, which I found interesting. And then back here we have a classic. Those can get to be about eight inches around. So they both have a similar days to maturity. So I'm just gonna harvest them and it's gonna be good. And we'll put all these greens in the fridge and give it to the girls. And if it's too much for the girls, we're gonna go ahead and blanch the rest of it in the freezer. Here is a purple Vienna kohlrabi. And they're pretty easy to harvest. So they're in the brassica family. They're actually a modification of broccoli, which in itself is a modification of mustard. So kohlrabi is essentially the broccoli stem, which is bulbed out. So all you have to do is get underneath it. See here? And we're going to give it a little snip. Ooh, it's actually a stem. There we go. So we have this out. That's what the bottom looks like. And then you have your stem here. So supposedly, uh, this can put out some side shoots of kohlrabi, so if it doesn't die, we'll go ahead and just uh, leave it. But otherwise, I'm going to take this, it's going to snap, 
all the leaves off. You can also cut them off if you so desire. So we're going to peel it and grate it and we'll be using these to make kohlrabi fritters. We have one kohlrabi down so I'm going to go ahead and harvest the rest of these and I'll show you what we end up with because it's very hot out so I'm going to be taking some breaks because I'm out here even for more than a few minutes I'm starting to like overheat so I'm going to go drink some water. We got most of them out. A the little pile there so we can clean it up. We're at the last one. This is our biggest kohlrabi that we have. Now the Cossack kohlrabi definitely has a thicker stem than the other ones. So I probably should have gotten a little mini saw instead of these, but this is working fine. That thing looks amazing. Really beautiful plant. Definitely growing it again. I wanted to show you this just as a size comparison to me. Oh, it's like a good hat, actually. This thing is huge. Look at that, it's gorgeous. This one's good. I'll grow these again, they'll probably get bigger for the fall since they're not growing into the heat. They'll be starting in the heat and then growing into the cold and that'll give for a lot better flavor. So I'm gonna get all these cleaned up and then I'll show you what we got. It is so easy when you're looking at plants outside to kind of misjudge their size. That is boo-boo for reference. Um, <laughs> so all the ones that I didn't de-leaf yet, I just kind of piled up here. It's taking up about a third of my table. Just purely, there's boo-boo, just purely in uh, mostly leaf matter. So if you want like a size comparison, there's my hand and some kohlrabi. I already did two, so two of them. They're about the size of, I'd say like a billiards ball, at least these two. And then uh, this is about the size of a baseball, I guess. So we're gonna get these processed up and Boo is gonna enjoy sniffing them. Right, honey? Yeah. But look at that. That looks pretty sweet. That's gonna be a lot of leaves for the chickens and for us for the freezer. I have Greg here. I told him to hold it like a bouquet. That's all of the leaves from it. Are you excited? Mm -hmm. And then, um, so enjoy that view for a second. And then over here, we have all of the kohlrabi. So that's our harvest and that's our harvest and that's a Greg. Thank you for your help there. Mm -hmm. All right, so. I'm gonna make some salad with this. I won't show you the fritters we're making because I've never made them before, but we'll make a salad with these. Here you can see all of our kohlrabi pots. We're gonna water them and see if they'll grow back. And then I wanna show you what's going on behind me. We definitely uh, cut brassica late in half here. So we've already harvested our broccoli. You can see they're putting out some side shoots here. So it's good just for little bites here and there. You can see here, there, 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 there. Even down there, we'll get some small heads. And same thing here. So our cauliflower, we have purple Sicily cauliflower here. It's actually a snowball out front that I never planted. But they're getting ready to start putting out heads. And this is a very good example of that. You can see in there. I've never successfully gotten cauliflower before. So this is the closest. So you're gonna keep an eye on it. We're gonna keep watering it. Maybe get a little bit more fertilizer. The grass is doing really good. So now I'm gonna go back inside because it's nice and cool in there. It's very hot out here. I'm gonna go make some kohlrabi salad. Okay, so we're gonna make some kohlrabi salad. I already have one peeled up here. I'm trying to use the smaller one. So I already got one of the purple Viennas. So I got this cut up thin. And we're pretty much just gonna toss them with 
some like olive oil. We have some fig balsamic vinegar. I'm gonna go get some basil, but they're pretty easy. So you're just gonna take it and peel it like you would an apple. Um, the skin on these is pretty thin. Uh, apparently if you don't pick them in time, the skin will harden up and then that's more difficult. We're just gonna go ahead and peel it. So supposedly the skin gets bitter when it's thicker. So this is pretty thin, it should be okay, but just be on the safe side. We're gonna peel it anyways. All the way to the top. They did so bad for us last year. So last year, the bed at the very end by our, our back door in the garden, we have uh, peppers and eggplants in it right now. The last year I tried to put brassicas there thinking it was the shady side and then the summer came and it was obviously the sunny side and the shady side was on the other end where we have like our watermelons right now. So they didn't do well. So I can tell just looking at this that's a little fibrous on the outside. I probably could have peeled it a bit deeper but that's okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this in half. Put it down here, and then we're gonna make it into slices like this one. Now you can eat these with like a little salad dressing. You can cook them if you want. You can eat them raw. They're pretty sweet. Um, you just dip it in a little sauce. We're gonna make a little dressing. So that'll be good, especially with the basil. I wish we had a little mozzarella. It's in the freezer right now. So we just save it in there for pizzas, but that's okay. I've seen people make this with like a, you can make like a green apple salad or with pears. That's okay. So here we go. This is our two little ones. This is perfect for a snack. So I'm gonna go get the basil and then we'll plate this up. There you go. Just a little bit of olive oil, fig balsamic, and some Genovese. So I'm gonna go eat this and enjoy myself. And then I think we got some watering to do. I just grabbed these out of the fridge, so we're gonna bring the chickens a snack and probably wait till the sun starts going down to water. Uh, everything's looking okay, nothing's too droopy, but the chickens do need a cold treat. We have a thief. Uh, they're doing pretty good in here. As you can see, it's mostly shaded, which is more than it was last year. Last year it ended roughly about the end of this. So this has been sitting in the fridge for a good, like, 45 minutes now. So I'll put it in the shade. They'll eat it. It's cold. They'll be happy. You know, cool them down internally. And we're about the, at the height of the heat right now. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and get some ice and add that to their water. Even though their water is also in the shade and pretty cool. I just came to grab some eggs and I was actually pleasantly surprised at how insulated their coop is because the eggs feel cool, which is great because they're in the 90s right now. So that is a very good sign that they're staying at a good temperature at night. I got some ice, so we're gonna go add that to their water, but I just wanted to take a pit stop here at our greens bed. So we have collards, kale, and chard in here. And I love growing kale and chard. This is actually the first year collards did well for me. But because they are cold and heat resistant, so they do like really well for us. We pretty much get them going and they'll go to into the winter. So I just wanna show you how well they're doing despite the heat even compared to some of our other plants, which for the most part aren't drooping, which is pretty nice, but just coming over here, like you see our cardoon, they're fine. They just like to wilt in the heat a little bit. They could use, you know, some mulch, some water, but um, as soon as it cools down, they'll bounce right back. But there's a distinct difference from our greens bed, which is just crushing it right now. 
I've been keeping my eye on this lavender and checking it every day and I think I'll probably harvest it either later today or tomorrow and we're gonna make an infused coconut oil which I'll probably add to like baths or tea pretty much anything I don't want to buy shea butter right now um, just because we don't need it and things are so expensive so I do have coconut oil so we're gonna do that hi girls you can see they have their mouths open chickens can't sweat so they have to you know push air in and out to cool themselves down including putting their wings up you can see that it's not that bad chickens are usually pretty good as long as you give them some shade um, I've noticed with these breeds our orange ones are ISA browns and our fun looking ones are golden lace Wyandots uh, they usually do good until the temperatures get below the teens they're in the teens they're still good below that they get a little chilly and they're usually okay with the heat until we get to like the upper 90s I got one over here who keeps pecking me hello what's up Clyde please stop pecking me look at this what are you doing hey Bertha you look hot let's put this ice in your water also open their coop to air out a little bit. I'm gonna have to clean out this water bin soon. But meanwhile, let's keep that in. Uh, if it's really hot where you are or you can't give your chickens shade, which you really do need to give them shade, um, you can also put water bottles in the freezer and put that in their run so they can sit on it and cool down. But this works too. Oh, that's a hot lady. Girl, go drink some ice water. Yeah, go drink some ice water. It's good for you. I gotta clean that water container. I hear you. I'm hot too. I'm gonna go back inside. If you do notice that your chickens are getting lethargic uh, or have passed out, which I hear is something that can happen if they get too hot, um, bring them inside. Try to cool them down as fast as possible. They see there's some stuff you can purchase to get them to drink that'll help recharge their electrolytes. Um, do your research online for that. We've been pretty lucky. Uh, we had a lot more days in the hundreds last year by this time. So this is not quite so bad. It's also very dry here. Um, if it was humid, I would be a lot more concerned and probably give them a little walking bath. When I come by and water later, I'll fill up some of their um, dust bath holes so they can stick their feet in. Thanks for joining me today. I hope this is helpful for you if you're harvesting your own kohlrabi or if you're thinking about growing it. This round of kohlrabi was our experiment to see if we could get any successful brassicas starting them in the spring. We've always had trouble with it, so we were so psyched that we got a harvest. We're gonna be doing our main kohlrabi harvest in the fall, which we're actually gonna get the seeds started for that pretty soon. But in the meanwhile, we're gonna enjoy what we have if we're successful making kohlrabi fritters, I will go ahead and put it on our Instagram. You can find it there. Uh, you can also find all of our social media apps in the link tree in the description, along with uh, Cash App and Venmo if you like the channel. And if you like the information, please feel free to send us a tip. We'd be definitely grateful for that. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time.